Okay, so good morning. So, in the last class, we started radiative transfer. So, we will continue with the basic definitions, terminologies. We will also look at the two important radiation laws, namely the Stefan Boltzmann's law and the Wien's displacement law, which can be derived from the Planck's, universe, Planck's black body distribution function. The Planck's distribution function got him the Nobel Prize. Uh, Max Planck got the Nobel Prize in 1918. Okay. So, just to have a quick recap. Uh, if you see the last class we did this, there is a small area d a 1, okay, n is the unit vector, the point in space okay. So, there is another uh, elemental area d a n okay, this is the radius r, this is theta theta is the zenith angle and phi is the azimuthal angle. So, basically this fine no x y z this okay. Ah. So, r so this phi is measured from x okay bottom that x y plane. So, a point can be specified as x y z, it can also be specified as r theta phi. Okay. So, if you specify the radius, the zenith angle as well as azimuthal angle, then you are able to specify that point. So, this is basically the spherical coordinate system. Alright. So, we must now look at the difference between plane angle and solid angle. So, if d alpha d alpha equal to radians. The unit for that is radians. This is the plane angle 2D. 3D solid angle. D A N, N denotes area normal, okay, the normal area. So, this is, this got the units of steridian. Okay. Now, let us go a little deeper.
this is small this radius is r this theta this is d phi this is d a 1. So, this is your unit vector and all that. that is d a n ok. Is it clear? Now, the next step is I am obstructing you. Uh -huh. The next step is to write an expression. Listen to me carefully. The next step is to write an expression for d a n in terms of the basic coordinates r theta and phi and find an expression for the d omega solid angle in terms of r theta and phi and then we will integrate between the limits and find out what is the maximum solid angle for a hemisphere. If you multiply by 2, you will get the maximum solid angle for a sphere that is the exercise we are going to do for over the next 5 6 minutes. So, first write d a n in terms of r theta and phi sin theta cos theta tan theta whatever you want to do then get an expression for d omega as a function of r theta and phi. So, therefore, we will we'll be in a position to express the solid angle in terms of r theta and phi. So, the spherical coordinate system is very useful for us ok and then we will find out the maximum solid angle. Uh, over a hemisphere ok. Now, I need to give a proper caption for this figure. So, this is got The right caption for this figure would be solid angle subtended by the elemental area d a n at a point on another elemental area d a 1 in the spherical coordinate system. All these are the R, right? All these are R, right? Huh? What is this? R sin theta, na? Huh? What will be this? So this is the same as this, huh? This is R sin theta. What about this? R d theta. Okay.
No R square, eh? You're vibrating. Those are the pings, huh? Huh? Okay. So, hemisphere is generally two pi, huh? Yeah, complete this. Please complete the integration. So, omega over the hemisphere is 2 pi stair radians, why we are worried about the hemisphere is we are looking at radiation onto a surface and radiation from a surface. If you consider radiation from a volume, an alumina particle is burning or something or you are considering a gas molecule and all that, then we will consider the 4 pi. Okay. So, omega equal to 2 pi, now you are able to see that d omega is uh, proportional to Okay. So, what about the flux density? We wrote an expression for the flux density in the earlier class. I do not think I gave this. Okay. So, this is an important formula which converts I to F, I is basically a scientific quantity, F is an engineering quantity all right. I has got watts per meter square per steradian per micrometer. Okay. So, this will become the steradian will go, it will become watts per meter square per micrometer. Then if you integrate it with lambda 1 to lambda 2, it will become watts per meter square. If you multiply by the d a 1, it will finally become watts. All right. So, so this is so. Uh, this is the formula for flux. All right. So, flux density is proportional to solid angle, right? The flux density is proportional to the solid angle. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Suppose you don't believe me. Consider this d a one is this a four sheet of paper. This d a one. This duster is DAN. Okay, this is DAN. This is DA1. Assuming the both are very small, connect the centroid of this to centroid of this. Then I keep it at this height. I can find the solid angle. Okay. Both the areas are the same. Now this is at 1000 degree centigrade. Let's say this is at 30 degree centigrade. You are finding out how much this fellow duster is receiving heat from this fellow. So it will temperatures are the same other conditions are the same, it receives some heat, right? I keep the duster here. What happens to the solid angle subtended by the duster at a point on d a 1, is it increasing or decreasing? Increasing. Decreasing because 
what is actually the solid angle? The solid angle intuitively you can feel that the solid angle is nothing but if this duster is here, I draw imaginary hemisphere with the radius equal to this distance. Okay, I am trying to find out what is the ratio of the area of the duster to the 2 pi r square. And even if the duster's area were to remain the same, as this r keeps on increasing, the duster occupies an increasingly smaller area of the hemisphere 2 pi r square. Therefore, the flux density is inversely proportional to r square, which is called the inverse square law, which your physics teachers must have taught somewhere. Okay. So, flux density is omega do not say and uh, the d omega is proportional to 1 by r square so it is not only the size of the earth and the sun and the temperatures of the temperature of the sun which decides the temperature of the earth the earth sun distance will solve the problem so are you getting the point so the distance is also very important in radiation all right now this is over See, for a black body instead of I lambda, you can call it as B lambda. This will be a function of temperature, right? So, the spectral, the spectral radiance or the monochromatic radiance or radiation intensity will be a function of lambda, okay? And uh, for each temperature, it will have a distribution, correct? So, I lambda can be why that I lambda is replaced by B lambda is. Uh, I lambda can be for reflection, I lambda can be for transmission, I lambda can be for absorption and I lambda can be for everything, anything. But B is basically for emission. Now, I have to multiply by the pi pi is the solid angle it, it takes care of the that proof we will see later now I do not have time. So, you multiply that pi by b lambda integrate from 0 to lambda all right ah, what do you get here watts per meter square will be The emissive power of a black body. This you know is sigma t to the power of 4 for a black body. We are still discussing black body, right? This result that it is equal to sigma t to the power of 4 was already known to all the people before Planck also because it was verified by experiment. You have to just find out the emissive power of a body and then uh, no, I am not defined black body yet, right? Okay. Hmm. I am not defined black body yet. Okay, I mm. will do that, but anyway, this relationship for a black body was known to people previously. But what is that value of B lambda which were multiplied by pi and integrated from 0 to lambda will give the sigma t to the power of 4, and what is it that what is it that B lambda which will for all temperatures tend to 0 when temperature is 0, which will tend to infinity when temperature is infinity, which will tend to 0 when lambda equal to 0, which will tend to 0 when lambda tends to infinity. This is a big puzzle. There is many people, many physicists worked on this and they were unsuccessful because they were trying to explain everything through classical physics. Then Max Planck found out an expression first in 1901. He found out an expression which agreed exactly with the experiments and proposed the Planck's law. Then he worked on the proof for 17, 15 to 17 years. Then he figured out that for this to be constant, for this to be true, E must be equal to H nu. Okay, that's how we got the Nobel Prize. Now, before this, we have to get, we have to define what a black body is. Black 
please take down a black body is 1 a black body is 1 which absorbs all incident radiation a black body is 1 which absorbs all incident radiation regardless of its direction and wavelength a black body is 1 which absorbs all incident radiation regardless of its direction and wavelength cool cool and then hollow cavity these are something which are close to black body hollow cavity is like this it is maintained at temperature t there is vacuum inside okay small opening is there so there will be multiple internal reflections right then the small the pencil of radiation which is coming out can be deemed to be a black body radiation radiation at the temperature t this is how you simulate black body in the lab okay coal may be having a so this is defined by a quantity called emissivity if emissivity is equal to 1 we will say it is black body okay rather a real body is the emission of a real body divided by the emission of a black body at the same temperature and wavelength so these are all some of the examples and then for this black body what is the i lambda for emission is the b lambda so of the various distributions planck only planck arrived at the correct distribution and planck got this as minus 16 so this is called the first radiation constant called the second radiation constant okay so this is Rayleigh and genes Rayleigh and genes got a distribution for b lambda which is c1 lambda to the power of minus phi divided by pi into e to the power of c2 by lambda t planck added minus 1 and got the nobel prize he just added minus 1 when he added minus 1 his experimental curves and his model agreed very well so first it was curve fitting he just added minus 1 and it worked then he worried why it worked then he tried all those he took some atomic oscillators if you take my radiative heat transfer course or you watch my youtube lecture nptel on radiative heat transfer course in two two full classes i will explain the derivation of this planck's distribution from first principle you have to take an atomic oscillator you have to take its kinetic energy and potential energy and you keep on doing and finally you will come to a stage where e equal to h nu you find the total number of oscillators in a particular volume and the total energy of all the oscillators in a volume then total energy divided by total number gives you the average energy then when the average energy then you, you have 3 degrees of freedom and this thing from so you borrow some things from statistical mechanics and then proceed this is how he figured out okay so but this is asymptotically correct okay that and it satisfies all fundamental and it satisfies all mandatory requirements what are the mandatory requirements lambda tending to 0 
it has to tend to 0, if it tends to infinity it will become a singularity, then uh, all physicists will concentrate on lambda tending to 0 and produce lot of energy right, okay. Same thing with lambda tending to infinity, so when lambda tending to 0 and lambda tending to infinity, V lambda must tend to 0 regardless of the temperature. Then when T equal to 0, T tends to 0, lambda, uh, B lambda must tend to 0, that, that is intuitive and when T tends to infinity, B lambda tends to infinity and finally, if it is integrated with over pi and then D lambda 0 to infinity, it must result in the Stefan Boltzmann's law. So it is an inverse problem, what is it that, what is that B lambda which will satisfy all this and which will agree with the experiments. So the answer to this was finally given by Max Planck. Now if you look at this, if you plot this, it is very interesting. B lambda versus lambda is like this. This is experimentally obtained, or you can take it as a Planck's distribution. Please take down features of the Planck's distribution. Number one, B lambda of T continuously varies with lambda. B lambda of T continuously varies with lambda for every T, okay or you say B lambda varies continuously with lambda for every t whatever, B lambda varies continuously with lambda, so it is that means I am saying it is not a discontinuous function. Number 2, for every temperature there appears to be a peak in the distribution, for every temperature there is, for every temperature there is a peak value of B lambda, for every, for every temperature, Marius, for every temperature there is a peak B lambda or there is a value of, there is a value of lambda at which B lambda is a maximum, 3, this maximum decreases with temperature. That is what I have indicated, right. The locus of the points the locus of the points will be a straight line. We are going to we are going to do that proof a little while. Now, fourth point. At a given lambda, B lambda increases with temperature, correct? If it is not so, it will violate which law of thermodynamics? It will violate the second law of thermodynamics. What does it mean? As a consequence of 4, you can write within brackets, no two blackboard, no two curves can cross, can intersect each other. For no two curves, I mean no two curves for two different temperatures can intersect each other. 
higher temperature curve will be above the lower temperature correct. No two curves will intersect each other. Okay, now a quick question. Please multiply this by pi, pi and all that. What will be the area under the curve? Area under each curve? Sigma t to the power of 4 by pi. Correct? If you multiply by pi, it will be sigma t to the power of 4. So, the area under the curve gives the Stefan. So, this is called the Stefan Boltzmann's law. We will see that little later. Joseph Stefan was an Austrian professor, Boltzmann was a German, is German PhD student. They figured this out using thermodynamics and then they use experimental data to get the value of sigma, but without quantum statistics. Max Planck came later and then figured out. So, you can see that in radiation the contribution of Germans is very, very high, the development of radiative transfer. Okay. Now, we will have to do something about this orange line. do not wait for me, find out the peak of every curve. So, differentiate your B lambda, differentiate your B lambda and find out where it becomes stationary. Uh, we lost track of the equation numbers, what is this equation number? You want to, no, let us use no, not 1 from the previous one or Huh? This is 7, okay. 8. Okay. Okay. Is that okay? So, first term is minus 5 lambda minus blah 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 that leave the pi is minus 1 lambda. Is it okay? Huh? Yes. Okay. How many of you are still doing? Yeah, I'll just give you a minute. Just uh, just partial differentiation.
okay now But if you solve it numerically, hmm. what is uh, what was C two? One point. Ten to the power of. How much is this? Two eight. Not point two. Two thousand something. Uh, two thousand. Okay. So this is called the Wien's displacement law. So Wien is another German professor. He also gave a black body distribution which was correct only in one part of the spectrum. Rayleigh genes gave a distribution, distribution which was correct in the other part of the spectrum, but Planck gave a distribution which was correct in the all, all the parts of the spectrum. Okay. Now, uh, as T increases what happens to lambda max? Huh? Decreases, all right. That is why with increasing temperature the lambda max tends to uh, decrease which was evident from the distributions we plotted. Okay, uh, This is one thing, the sun's temperature is about 5800 Kelvin, what will be the lambda max for the sun's radiation? Half, so which is in the visible part of the spectrum, Okay, which is in the visible part of the spectrum. That is why uh, the sun's radiation is very important, it gives that cool daylight. Now, the earth is at a temperature of let us say 280 Kelvin, 289 let us say it is 255 depending on which one your albedo and all that. Let us take 289 therefore, lambda max will be 10 micrometers. Okay. This will be in the infrared part of the spectrum and this greenhouse gases absorb the radiation in the infrared part of the spectrum whereas, they allow the radiation in the short wave or in the visible part of the spectrum. So, these greenhouse gases are this water vapor, carbon dioxide and methane and all those gases. So, when you con continuously burn this fossil fuels, incoming they allow and the outgoing they do not allow. That is, so this leads to a positive feedback which leads to what is called a radiative forcing and which upsets the equilibrium temperature of the earth. This also leads us to the concept of color. Okay, so, today I am wearing some, hopefully it is a blue trouser. What is the wavelength of blue? 0.5. Okay. 0.4 is violet, right? Let us say 0.5. If you put 0.5, what will be the temperature? 6000, huh? Am I at 6? What will happen to me with 6000 Kelvin? What is this color then? What is color? What is the color which you see? The color you see is not emission, the color you see is the reflection. 
whatever color you see is a reflection it absorbs all the colors but this gives out blue color okay but if you want to see real emission color in your workshop you have, you have heated that iron piece and then it becomes orange in color in smithy shop in forging shop that is an emission temperature otherwise whatever you see as color the chaitanya's t-shirt is bright yellow is because it reflects yellow color if nothing is coming out then it will be black that is why it is a black body so black is not a color black is the absence of color so that is a deep philosophical concept black is not a actually black is not a color okay but our eyes are capable of detecting only from detecting only from 0.4 to 0.7 okay so we cannot judge a body to be radiatively black based on 0.4 to 0.7 for all you know less than 0.4 and greater than 0.7 it may not absorb okay so if it has to be radiatively black for zero to infinity lambda it should absorb all the but when it absorbs in zero to infinity guaranteed that 0.4 to 0.7 also it will absorb therefore a radiatively black object will be a visually black object but a visually black object need not be a radiatively black object for example snow with some white color is seen it is a high absorber for most part of the spectrum its absorption is so high and by virtue of which its emissivity is 0.9597 and so on so black, black body means you immediately think asian paints or this thing black board or that you conjure up visions of something being very very dark right okay that so that is basically absence of color was absence of color was uh, uh, denoted by black and the next question come why is umbrella black all these questions will come to you whether it's good to have a white umbrella or black umbrella popular science question you answer let's not answer in a atmospheric science course all right i don't know you figure out why should the umbrella be black huh? we'll solve a problem and then close problem number 40 ya huh? 44 use wien's displacement law use wien wien eh marius i am pronouncing rightly yeah, wien. use wien use wien's displacement law to compute the color temperature use wien's displacement law to compute the color temperature of the sun for which the wavelength of the maximum solar emission for which the wavelength of the maximum solar emission is observed to be 0.475 micrometer use wien's displacement law to compute the color temperature of the sun for which the wavelength of the maximum solar emission is observed to be 0.475 0.475 micrometer Huh? No good sir. Degree Celsius. Let's get on to Kelvin. Forty-four. actually the sun's the sun's black body distribution does not sun's distribution does not correspond perfectly to black body it is slightly jagged so it is a approximation that's why the actual sun's temperature is 5800 it is not the core temperature of the sun where it is the photosphere that is the outer portion of the sun this is about 5800 kelvin so it approximately the ballpark is 6000 kelvin but the tube light is working at tube light is low temperature the incandescent bulb is working at 3000 kelvin the tungsten filament bulb is working at 3000 kelvin so the peak radiation is occurring in the infrared so it will produce heat and light the led is they say cool led because it produces more light than heat okay but technology is completely different as you know the nobel prize has gone to the people who figured out the led bulb okay so this is the so this is called the color temperature so the color temperature is based on the emission 
So, my pants color temperature will be something okay, but now it is reflection. So, it is the same temperature as me assuming that there is reached equilibrium okay. <laughs> All right. So, in the next class, we will see what happens when you integrate this Planck's distribution from 0 to infinity, Stefan Boltzmann's law. We will calculate the sun's temperature, we calculate the earth's temperature, I will give you all this geometry, solid angle and all that and then we will proceed to emissivity, absorptivity, transmissivity. Eventually, we will lead to, a, we have to go to a stage where you have to consider absorption, emission and scattering in the atmosphere. We should be able to find out the temp, uh, variation of the intensity in the atmosphere. All right.